Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering loops. Loops are just a way that allows us to execute code multiple times. C provides us with three kinds of loops, which are the while, the do while, and the for loops. So let's look a little bit deeper into these. First, it's the while loop. To use the while loop, you just have to use the while keyword, followed by a controlling expression surrounded in round brackets and a loop body surrounded in squiggly braces. A controlling expression is just an expression that evaluates to a Boolean value. And what this controlling expression does is it determines if we run the loop body or not. The loop body will run as long as the controlling expression evaluates to, to true. And if it evaluates to false, we exit out of the loop. So let's look at a quick example of a while loop. I have a short program open in my VS code where I'm just defining a variable and I'm defining an array with a couple of values. And I'm saying that while this value is less than five, we're gonna print out the array element with index i, and then we just increment the value of i. So let's run this program and see what it does. And as you can see, we just go element by element printing out the values of the array. So we execute these two lines in the loop body five times, because every time we run the loop body, we check if i is less than five, and eventually, the value of i exceeds 5, and that's when we exit the loop. Now, let's continue with the remaining kind of loops in C. First, we have the do while loop, and do while is exactly the same as the while loop, except the loop body executes at least one time. But as you can see, the syntax is a little bit differently. So, to write a do while loop, you just write this do keyword followed by the loop body, and then we follow the loop body with while, and then the controlling expression, followed by a semicolon. Let's look at a quick example of a do while loop in VS Code. As you can see, I have a program where I make this variable i, which equals zero, and then I print the value of i, then I try to increment i, and then I check if i is less than zero. This is always going to be wrong since I'm only incrementing i, and i already starts at zero. But let's see what happens when we run this program. So as you can see, even though this condition is always gonna be false, we run the code in the loop body at least once. And if I make this condition true, then this will, ju this will just behave like any while loop. And as you can see, now it just behaves like a while loop. The last loop type that we're gonna be covering are for loops. And for loops look a little bit more intimidating but they are quite simple. They just have more parts to them. First, to use a for loop, you have to write the for keyword. And in uh, round brackets, we first write an initialization expression. This is followed by a semicolon, then a controlling expression, followed by a semicolon, and lastly, an update expression. And the controlling expression is the exact same one that we've been using. So if it evaluates to true, we run the loop body. If it evaluates to false, we exit the loop. But this initialization expression is run exactly one time, and it's run before the first execution of the loop body. And then we have the update expression, which is run at the end of every execution of the loop body. So let's look at an example of a for loop in code. As you can see, I have a program that looks very similar to the one I have for my while loop, except inst instead of declaring i outside of the loop, I declare it in the initialization expression part of the for loop. And the i++, I've removed it from the loop and I've added it to the update expression portion of the loop. So as you can see, we can shorten our code by using the for loop. And as you can see, our loop behaves the exact same as it did with our while loop. But now let's look at some extra attributes that the for loops have. So for loops can have any number of expressions in the initialization expression portion and the update expression portion. But these expressions have to be glued together by commas. We'll see how this looks like in the code a bit later. Then we can also exclude any of the three expressions as well. So as you can see, I have an example of that where I just have two semicolons in the round bracket, and this will result in an infinite loop. And also, 
if we just include the controlling expression and nothing else, then our loop will behave exactly like a while loop. So as you can see, in our VS Code screen, I have rewritten the for loop code, but I've just glued some of the statements together, like this print statement and this uh, increment, increment statement. This is ill-advised since it's not very clear what we're doing here, but th this is just to show you that this is something we can do. And as you can see, our code behaves the exact same. Lastly, I want to cover infinite loops. Infinite loops are loops that have a controlling statement that is always true. Infinite loops never end unless specified, so we have to have an exit condition un under which they exit. Otherwise, they will continue executing forever. And note that in the lab machines, non-terminating code is not allowed. So make sure that your code has terminating loop. So if you have an infinite loop, make sure it has an exit condition. And as you can see, in my VS Code screen, I have an example of an infinite loop where we see the controlling statement is one. If we remember from our conditionals lecture, one is always true. So if we try to run this code, we can see that it never stops printing. And if this happens, don't worry, just press Control-C on your keyboard and it will ter terminate our program. 